Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations to the elect. And I wanted to speak on um, the video that I uh, uploaded by um, the beloved brothers, Jim S. Charlotte. And uh, the video that they did was entitled The African American Hoax. And it uh, is indeed a hoax. And um, you so called Negroes are walking around, as well as the rest of the tribes, calling yourselves after names that were put on you and given unto you by your oppressor. Now, um, if you look on the screen, you see uh, two men whom uh, you should be uh, well acquainted with or at least uh, know about because these two men are the men responsible for African-American studies being placed within all of America's school systems, okay? And the funny part about it is uh, those of our people who are off into Egyptology, black power and all of these different movements and ideologies and philosophies pride themselves in saying that the Bible was written by the so-called white man and they're very well misinformed um, even when they make the argument about King James which he wasn't a so-called white man King James did not write the Bible okay he ordered I believe 70 scholars to translate it from Greek from Hebrew and Greek to the old English, which is why you see thou sayest and thou doest. All right. And we use the King James translation because of the English translations, which we speak English. It is the most accurate. All right. Um, according to the translation, and we can always go back to the original scrolls to get those actual words. You know, then they say, well, King James was a homosexual, which that's all a lie. But when you get the law in the Bible, okay, it speaks out against homosexuality. So if, if, he were, if he did happen to be a homosexual who had the Bible translated, well, he was condemning himself. But that's another video for another time. Um, these misinformed men pride themselves in spewing out nonsense about, you know, how the so-called white man, you know, gave us the Bible, which that's a, a lie. Now, in slavery, he did use the Bible against us, but... If you go into the stories, he didn't allow us to read it. Okay? He didn't allow us to read it. And when we had church uh, 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 programs, they were heavily watched. And there was a particular doctrine that the slave would have to teach to the rest of the slaves to be obedient to the slave master. Using particular scriptures out of place to uh, promote uh, a beat down mentality and to remain in a position of servitude that's why when the likes of nat turner read the bible okay in its true uh form and the spirit jumped on him he had a a, a different outlook okay he, he 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 saw the real message and intent of the bible all right now uh, of course we're not to go out and mass murder people okay but he read the bible and he was like oh damn Okay, he saw the chariots according to his writings and so forth. But, um, you know, a lot of guys within uh, these black power movements, you know, they, you know, they, they, they love guys like Marcus Garvey. There's a lot of men within those movements that use the scriptures as the found at the foundation of what they taught and believed. Because the, the scriptures is not a book that teaches you to be a damn slave, man, and to have a slave mentality. The scriptures actually tells you to choose not the way of your oppressor. Now, with this whole African-American history um, being placed in schools, two Jewish men, see if I can uh, lighten that up. Two Jewish men, as you can see this uh, meme here, I, I used to have it without this, uh, you know, um, hashtag whatever this is at you know but um it says meet the fathers of african history now 
the anthropologist who created the fields of African-American studies and African studies in today's universities and institutions. All right. They were the teachers of W.E.B. Du Bois. OK, a uh, sellout, which he uh, could have been an Edomite, I believe. Um, it says Zora Nell Hurston, among many others. OK, <clears throat> not only. Does black Americans out of Africa motherland concept come from a white eugenist Charles Darwin, but black Americans historical connection to the landmass presently known as Africa, which that's not the uh, true name of it. OK, and the, the, the actual Africans are children of Ham, they're Hamites, which is where um, in the in the in you hear them talk about comedic science or Kim. Well, that word is a Hebrew word, chum, which basically means heat, chemistry. Okay, that's where you get the word chemistry, heat. You know, um, but it says um, it's based on two Jews. Okay, based on two Jews for the sole purpose of suppressing records of so-called Black Americans' origins in indigenous history in America with academic institutions created by white supremacy and furthermore to suppress that we are actually the Israelites because these two men while you know in, in the 1800s at the time that these men were around there were various doctrines going around being pushed uh, Darwinism was one of them that so-called Negroes Latinos and Native Americans the true children of Israel were actually um, they had low IQs they descended from animals and all of these various different doctors that were going around. So these two, all right, acting as if they uh, were, were, were coming with a uh, another, you know, a better way of looking at so-called African-Americans, blacks. They came with the philosophy and doctrine that these are Africans. They do have a culture. And when you hear our people today talk about you know, the motherland this, the motherland that, which at the end of the day, Africa is a very beautiful landmass, man. We agree, you know, but the whole earth is a beautiful land, man. This was paradise at one point. OK, but where we originate from is the land of Israel, man. OK, the the, the uh, over in that area in the Middle East, which that's close to Africa. You have a lot of people who say that. Yeah, that's true. OK. But at the end of the day, we are not Africans. And this whole African-American concept that our people who shun the Bible take hold to comes from the very white man that they say gave us the Bible. Here's this, a picture I took. These are all Egyptologists, Samuel Birch, okay, Carl Richards. James Henry uh, Breastlet, you know, Emmanuel D. Rogues, okay, E.A. Wallace Booch, Henrich Call, whatever. These are all Edomites, okay, and they're at the forefront of this whole Egyptology movement, and then our people, in their pride and ignorance, take hold to it. As something that is actually true according to who they are man and as you can see it worked but the very people you know who um make all of this this fuss about the white man gave us this the white man gave us that when it comes to the bible who are the fathers of their doctrines who trans uh who, who translated the hieroglyphs uh jean francis champoulion uh, Edomite. Okay? Now, let's get a scripture real quick. This is Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage which I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Now, that has to be speaking of Babylon the Great. Now, when we were in these various different captivities, the Assyrian Babylonian, uh, 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 you know, the uh, the Medo-Persian Empire, 
the Greeks and the Romans, we knew that we were Israelites. Okay, but after the Roman Empire, you know, pretty much 70 AD, you know, we were ran out of the land and we did enter into various parts of Africa and we did do big things. You already had various Israelites in Africa at that time. So we do have people in Africa. Okay, we do have history that goes back to Africa. The thing is, or so-called Africa, okay? The thing is, which is the land of Ham at the end of the day, we are not Africans, okay? Africa is named after the, uh, a counterpart of Christopher Columbus who conquered that land, Leo Sipius Africanus. Then you have Amerigo Vespucci, Okay, which the origin of uh, uh, Amarca or Amargo is bitter. Okay, we're 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 not descendants of either of those those two Edomites who conquered these lands. Okay, so when the Lord said we would discontinue from our heritage, this is speaking of when we came over here to the Americas, man. Okay, because what we were taught lies. Okay, the people in which we look to. Um, let's see here. Uh, prophet. Let me see here. There's a scripture. No prophet. Uh, we have. Let's see. Isaiah. All right. To a people that have the burden of the beasts of the south. I think this was it. This is it. Isaiah 30 and 5. I'll start at 1. Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith Yahweh that take counsel but not of me and that counsel is all of these different philosophies man because if you don't know who the hell you are then pretty much your mind can be guided in any way man that's why we tell our people at the forefront of repentance is understanding that you're an israelite it goes hand in hand because you know and understand there's a particular way that you should be uh, uh living there's particular guidelines to the the power that you uh serve and that created you man when you go into Egyptology, there's no true laws against homosexuality. There's no true laws on how to, you know, govern yourself on the earth. Now, they do have various gods. That's the thing. You know, uh, the people who are Egyptologists, they say ain't no God and all of this. But then when you go into Egyptology, there's millions of gods. OK, and I'm not not literally millions, but there's a hell of a lot of gods with a hell of a lot of functions, man, that are based on nonsense. The God of this, the God of that. And then when you go into the creation story of Egypt and these Hamites, it's all bugged out. Sex gods, you know, busting nuts in the, in the, the, the uh, you know, excuse my French, but they, they, these two gods, Geb and Nut, you know, having sex and one of them busts a nut on some lettuce and busts the planets and all of the universe into existence. The Big Bang Theory, that all goes back to Ham. Esau uses the energy of Ham Evolution, that all goes back to the Babylonians and the magic of the ancient world, man. The Hamites, the Sumerians. So all of these sciences that our people are into, that they think are, 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 are so grandiose, they all go back to uh, vanity and idol worship. And Esau Edom uses these things to put spells on you. Because why do you think the Edomite always goes to Africa? Why do you think they, the, when the Greeks came in power, they, they, they automatically went to the... Uh, uh, the, to Egypt and the Babylonians to learn their gods because they understand that these are your uh, uh, places of Israel's major captivity and these different gods all right really mess with Jake Spear this is why the Lord said when we get amongst these Hamites not to go off into the customs and their ways man to separate from their sons and daughters to separate from them entirely because these gods and different things have been the problem and why we have went into captivity after captivity after captivity, all right, uh, 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 with the Lord. It says, woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with the covering, all right, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And that's what you're doing, okay? You're taking, you, you're putting off being a son of the Most High God, okay, to take on vanity and be an African, an African-American, to take on the gods of Kemet and all of these various different things that don't profit you. Okay? And look where they're getting with that. They ain't getting no damn where. They really, within being an Egyptologist, they don't have any plan for uh, uh, what to do. 
They don't have any prophecies on what's going to happen to America. They don't even understand why they're still why, why they're in captivity. So they've been left out to dry by the gods of Kemet. OK, that walk down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And America is that shadow of Egypt. This is that new Egypt. OK, the buildings. The, uh, the the philosophies, the way of life, where, whether you go the cosmetics, women's liberation, bowling, okay, beer, all of these things that we see around us go directly back to Egypt, man. Okay, and it says, um, and Isaiah here is is is, is cursing out Hezekiah for a, a act he did, and there were particular other things that were happening. But we can tie this to what's happening now in the spirit. That which is then is now. It says, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and, your, and the trust of the shadow of Egypt your confusion. And that's what our people are. They're, they're confused, man. Okay, mainly the ones who are walking around calling themselves black and African-American. Because some of them have thrown the Bible away and some of them try to mix and mingle Egypt with the Bible. When the Lord destroyed Egypt. Okay. It says they were all, verse 4, for the princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hannes, these different uh, gods and idols, man, okay, to make alliances with uh, the Egyptians. It says they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach, man. Okay, um, there's another one I was looking for all day let's see we have waited all day all the day let me see maybe in lamentations let's see here because there's a one that i wanted specifically that was a good one though but um all the day for people uh let's see here look at jeremiah uh, drink this thing, faint all day. Hmm. Let's see here. Profit. Either way it goes, somebody could post it on the comment, but I know it deals with how our people waited and looked all day for people that wouldn't help nor profit them, man. Let's see here. Nah, that ain't it. And that's that's our people. They 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 look after all of these different philosophies from a people that won't profit them, man. Okay. Hmm. But either way it goes, you know. Um, we were discontinued. Let's see if there's any more here. Verse seven: For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever that this is a rebellious people and a lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. OK, so Isaiah was like telling his his his, uh, uh, you know, a scribe, write this, write these actions down so that down the line, the people who are teaching his word can understand how rebellious our people are, man, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And this is what our people are doing via these debates, via Sonetta TV, via Surah Sutan Seti, via all of these different guys, man, Shaka Amos. And they look absolutely pathetic. And when you get to the grand scheme of things, they're just using all of these big words, polite. But they don't have the answers. Look at Polite. He's back. He, he, he talked all of that shit. Now he's with the so-called Jew popping bottles in Hollywood, man. Talking about uh, uh, going into the Greek to to say it's OK to sell your soul, man. Which where the hell did he get going into the Greek at? This is uh, the book of Revelation. Chapter 11. And eight, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord, where also our Lord was crucified, man. And the dead bodies is, is, is speaking of you Israelites here in America. You you pretty much laid in the streets of the city 
all right, in a dead state. Why? Because you followed after guys like this, man. Now, I have these videos pulled up. I have these, these videos pulled up from a playlist that I have. Um, Franz Boas, okay, the father uh, 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 of anthropology, basically, man. And these are these people, man. As a matter of fact, let's click on a few of them, get a few. Yeah, Columbia. And uh, from the 1890s on through the early part of the century, uh, well, actually to the mid 20th century, was busily conducting experiments and trying to prove the importance of environment over uh, heredity. So, for example, he, um, he was able to show, while, while eugenicists were always doing things that, that seemed so odd from a late 20th century perspective, like measuring people's skulls and measuring... The, the, the um, eugenicists were doing drugs and thinking up ways to figure out why we should exterminate you. Well, your skull is shaped this particular way. You're, you're connected to monkeys. Because uh, when you look at this whole Darwinism madness... A lot of people do never talk about the title of his, of his book, the 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 uh, 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 the Darwinism book. You know, it's uh when you get to the grand scheme of things, in the title it says "well favored species." Who was that well favored species? Okay, the Edomites. So they made all of these philosophies and lies. So these two Edomites, Franz Boas and Melville Herskovitz, said, "Well, no, they're not monkeys." And they gave you a culture that would, in the, at the end of the day, destroy you worse than the sword destroyed you, man. Because this is also a part of Esau's sword, his lies. Body type as, as a marker of, of race and then ultimately as a marker of capacity. Uh, Boaz did the same kind of measurements but showed a, a vast difference between the migrating generation and and the first american born generation These Edomites are crazy, and man. really showed that uh at least the eugenicists ought to concede that her heredity had its limits that environment was a powerful thing that was an argument that ultimately carried the day um later in the 20th century but at the time he was he was really uh trying to push this line in the the 1900s and 19 teens it was a losing argument and it was the argument that lost in american politics um it was the h.h H. goddard this is melville herskovitz Blackness. What is a Negro in the sense that the term is used in the United States? Obviously, one only has to look at the great degree of crossing, tremendous variation in color with large American Negroes. I hear the voice of Melville J. Herskovitz, and what I wonder is, how did a white man come to know so much about black people? Probably more than any other American, Melville Herskovitz is the person who demonstrates that African Americans are connected to Africans. See that? He was a leading anthropologist and at the forefront of establishing, no, they're not monkeys, they're Africans. So getting out of, you know, they're basically separating themselves from the, the rest of the pack of the Edomites who were, you know, engulfed in studying how you were beasts and savages and doing experiments on you with no Anastasia, killing your children, you know, uh, using these different philosophies and pseudoscience to go around a, the earth and destroy you. These two Edomites came a, at a different rate because they knew eventually Jake would wake up and be like, this is some bullshit, you know? So they gave you something to wake up to, another uh, alternative to the madness that was being spewed. And they came up what you are uh, connected to Africa, African-American studies. And they made sure that this was taught in all American school systems. So when you go to school, when, when your child goes to school, because I remember when I, I used to go to school, you were, you know, uh, it, would, it would, something would just pop up about, you know, the blacks and African-Americans and this and this and that. You know, they came over here. Now they're taking it out of the school books, you know, that, you know, how we came over here and saying we were indentured servants and all of that. But... 
all of that is put there because of these two men that we're, we're, we're talking about. And the people who are on Sonetta TV and taking hold to this black and back to Africa kick, this is where their philosophy is founded at. <laughs> this is where their philosophy is founded at. Our, 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 the scrolls and everything were written by Israelites, man. Now, it may have been translated at particular times and put in books by so-called white men. And yes, they did have us in captivity. Yes, they did use the Bible in a, in a way that was destructive. But they never told us we were the Israelites. They never told us to keep the commandments of the Most High and while we're this, uh, in this position. They used it for deception. But these philosophies are freely given unto you even unto this day. You don't see the so-called white man on a news station going to sign at a TV saying these, 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 uh, you know, black news one on one. You know, we, we got to get them off the street. They ain't taking their videos down like that. They're coming after the Israelites. Oh, this is the 20th century. But he was also kind of social paradox. When you look at Ernest Chris through one angle, he sets the terms for our understanding of the relationship between Africa and black people in the Americas. See that? From another angle, you might see him as someone who appropriates a certain kind of knowledge. From he, another- He set the tone for what you guys are calling yourselves and your whole identity. Another angle, he's the son of Jewish immigrants and he's trying to sort out his own position in America. And he's a so-called Jew. Okay, that's the, the, the enemy, Amalek. Okay? And, and there's more videos I had, but I don't have a lot of time. But the beauty is the Holy Spirit has entered into our, 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 our minds. And now we are understanding who we truly are. We would put off the different idols and all of the bullshit that we were taught. Okay? Let's look at this one. That was a good video. I'm going to have to... I've watched it a while back, but, you know... Just click on a few more. And these are Jake's bigging this guy up. The Hershkowitz Library is one of the largest African studies collections in the world. He has a library. We are here to document Africa from an African perspective, as well as a European or Western perspective. Internationally, it's very well known. On the continent of Africa, when you talk about African studies, you talk about Northwestern. Noble J. Herskovitz came to Northwestern in the 1930s, the late 1930s, to establish the Department of Anthropology. And he started realizing that... When you go to school, what do you learn? Anthropology, that's one of the, 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 the topics. These devils are at the forefront of that, okay? You know, studying the peoples of Africa would become extremely important. And so in 1954, we have the creation and establishment of the Herskovitz Library of African Studies. We collect all manner of things. We collect in all subject areas. And then we also collect in all languages. We're also extremely fortunate to have faculty and students who... And they never tell you you're the Israelites. They never tie you at one at any point to the real Jews of the Bible. But they hijacked and basically, how were they funded to get all of these libraries? Because these devils are juiced in, man. But it sounds so good that they're saying, well, they're not beast. But they created a whole culture that you have taken on, man. Okay, and the beauty of it is the Holy Spirit. Okay, after we would have, you know, be in a, the, our dead bodies would lie in the street. Okay, verse 11, and after three days and a half, Revelation 11 and 11, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet. Those dead bodies stood up on their feet, showing you that this ain't talking about a spirit, a, a, a physically dead. This was speaking of spiritually dead because through being lied to and following after the way of the oppressor, OK, you think the man who paid for the slave ships and brought your ass over here into captivity is going to truly tell you who you are. And that's what these guys are saying. When, when you got the likes of Polite and all of them were African back to Africa, 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 which, yeah, Africa is a very beautiful land. But so is South America. You know, so is uh, New Zealand. There's various beautiful lands. Now, there's a lot of natural uh, resources over there, as well as in the Middle East. But there's natural resources all over the earth. The earth is ours, man. You see? 
and we're Israelites. And this prophecy that we're reading about, because they, they, they thrived on us being in that dead state. But see, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Why is great fear falling on them with saws? Because they have paid billions of dollars to keep the understanding that we're, we're the Israelites away from us, man. Um, um, Psalms 83 <clears throat> and two, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones we're the hidden ones all right hidden in plain sight because prophecy proves who we are and what we're doing us going out and waking up this great awakening of jake you know so-called negroes latinos and native americans standing on their feet and saying that they're israelites that's according to the holy spirit that's biblical prophecy and see what we're talking about is tied to an actual legacy being black and african-american isn't tied to a damn thing man OK. It says they have come and said, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. See that? That's what they want. They don't want the name of Israel to be uh, 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 any more remembrance. And going back into Egypt, what did the uh, Pharaoh say? Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that if any war falleth out, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So Esau Edom has the same mind frame as the ancient Pharaoh. We have to deal wisely with this people and keep them distracted, keep them from understanding who they true or truly are, keep them from their power so that they don't come together. Because if they come together, something bad could happen to us. And we're coming together in these latter days, the elect. OK, and um. Esau's through. I, 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 you know, I had a bunch of other thoughts, but I'll, I'll end it off here. Exodus 33 um, or Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who was like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh, the shield of thy help, and who was the sword of thy excellency. And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. And this is a uh, an example of one example, which that one example, that covers a whole hell of a lot because this is heavy information, you know? So get uh, get in league, you know, with that understanding, man. You know, I, I have that those videos saved on a playlist on my page called Watch These. Um, look it up, you know, uh, watch that video. Look up that article that the uh, brother, the brothers went into on that video. And be edified, man, because this devil is at the end, man. So that's why all of this information is coming out. So get it while it's hot. Shalom.